Hi, it's Jonathan, and today is Friday, March 28th of 2020, and this is Tips for Working Remotely. So today's video is going to be a little different. This is um, not so much about working remotely, but it's a really important topic and one that I love, and it's Friday, so let's do something a little more... Uh, Hi, it's Jonathan, and today is Friday, March 28th of 2020. These are tips for working remotely. Uh, today is going to be more of an organizational level thing you can do that isn't necessary for uh, just remote workers, but it's transformational and it's a really important topic. Um, so this might be my last daily video. I've been doing these uh, all week, and they take quite a bit of energy. Last night's didn't get out till like 9 o'clock p.m., um, so I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, in a couple hours, we're going to be doing a um, weekly reflection meeting on Slack and Zoom. Um, but by the time you see this, it'll probably already have happened. So I hope those of you that attended enjoyed it. Uh, again, this video is going to be a little longer, um, but there's some really good, important stuff in here. So I'm Jonathan. I help people work better together online with more freedom and accountability. And let's get into it. So we're gonna talk about tensioning the system today. But before we do, the quote of the day, the person who sweeps the floor should choose the broom. This is a quote from Howard Bear, Berhar. Uh, he's the former CEO of Starbucks. And he was basically saying that um, whoever is doing the work should have a say in how the work is done. He wasn't saying that you should have a thousand different POs for a thousand different rooms. Just that whoever's doing the work should have feedback into how, into how the work is done. And that's going to be relevant today when we talk about tensioning the system and tensions and what that's all about. So tensioning the system. First, let's talk about what is a tension. Um, a tension is just a felt sense between the current reality and a possible future. Or anything you notice that could be different in your organization. Now, it's a strange word to use, tension, but you can also think of, um, you can think of it as uh, a problem or an opportunity. We don't want to use the word problem. Oh, Siri. We don't want to use the word problem um, because it's, it has a negative connotation. And we don't want to use the word opportunity because lots of times the things that bring up attention are not necessarily, well, they are all, they are all, they are all opportunities, but it's just not a very meaningful word. It's not the most accurate word. Language is important. So we use the word tension. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a different word that you can use to introduce it to your teams, and you can really use this, this other word the entire time, but we'll talk about that. So uh, the use of the word tension comes from holacracy, which is a way of managing a business with de decentralized authority, and that's what I'm trained in as a certified holacracy coach. Um, but according to the, I thought I would give you the official definition. In holacracy, you are responsible for monitoring how your roles, purpose, and accountabilities are expressed and comparing that to your vision of their ideal potential expression to identify gaps between the current reality and a potential that you sense. Each gap is a tension. You're also responsible for trying to resolve those tensions by using the authorities available to you. So that's the formal definition, but you can just think of it as anything I sense that I think could be better. So why do we use the word tension? Well, um, it comes from the root word meaning to stretch or to tense. Um, uh, bridges are under tension. Um, rubber bands are under tension. And there's a difference between the current reality. In, in the case of a, in the business example that we have here, there's a difference between the current reality and a potential reality. You can think of it like, this is how it is now. I feel it could be different. And now I'm sensing the tension. And then when we make the change, the tension is resolved. Um, that's a really helpful way to think about it. So why would we process tensions? Who cares? Um, well, tensions already exist in your organization. And in fact, most organizations are swimming in tensions and they live in the background and they're, they're not utilized. Um, people ignore them and, and try to brush them away or spend a lot of time and energy avoiding them. Um, so imagine if you, in your organization, you could, instead of that, turn those tensions into something healthy. If you think about a healthy person that you know, they deal with their tensions, right? Like we all kind of 
recognize that a healthy person deals with their tensions. We can do this on an organizational level too. The organization can use tensions for healthy change. And a lot of really healthy people also even welcome tensions, like something new that I can grow and learn from, um, you know, kind of an optimistic perspective, but it's, it's something to keep in mind. Tensions are valuable. Tensions are the source of change in your organization, in your life. Pretty much anything you do, it comes from a tension. You want to get a cup of coffee? Well, you have a tension that you're tired or thirsty. Um, you know, you want to buy a house? Well, you have a tension that you want to fully express your purpose in the world by owning a home and, you know, that feels good. So when you start to recognize that everything is tension-driven already, um, it makes a lot of sense to start processing these in your organization. Tensions are also the source of learning and growth. Um, and a lot of organizations are starving themselves because they don't have the ability to process tensions. Um, and that's really, it's really a shame, you know. Um, so if you can just start to process them, just start to recognize them, uh, thing, it'll come, growth will occur, and eventually your organization will be processing tensions and responding to its environment. And we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. Another way to t kind of drive this home is if you think about any entity, any, any, any life form, any animal, any plant, without tension, it's dead. So unless you're processing your tensions, your organization is dying. Okay, I know that's a little heavy. Um, this is, I'm passionate about this, and I think it's really useful to drive some of these ideas home. Let's talk a little bit about the life of attention. Um, so you've got your organization, and the organization is composed of roles, which do work, and we have these already. Uh, in your organization, each person probably has one role, and those roles probably don't change very much, and I think that's something we can improve. Um, but for the purposes of this, we want to think about the organization being broken into roles and then people filling those roles. And in the course of filling the role in the course of doing your work, you sense tensions. I think this marketing campaign could be better, or I need a marketing campaign. Um, and so whenever you have a tension, it can be generally broken down into these four categories, action, project, request or expectation. And we'll talk about what those are in just a sec. Um, but what I want you to understand from this diagram um, is that when you make a request, when, when your tension results in a request, so we need a marketing campaign, I'm going to go ask the marketing director. That request then goes to a role, the marketing director, and now that role says, oh yeah, we should do that, that sounds good. And now they're sensing the tension, or they're sensing their own tensions. So the marketing director, the way they experience this is going to be different than how the CEO experiences it. CEO says, uh, you know, stock price is going down, we need a better marketing campaign. And the marketing director says, uh, we need a marketing campaign, I need, uh, I need a, a TV crew and a design firm and various other things. And from those tensions, he or she or they would create actions, projects, other requests, and potentially try to set other expectations. So we talked a little bit about this a minute ago. Um, for processing tensions, uh, attention can turn into or be or out of attention. And I'm, I'm being really careful with my language here because it's subtle. But for our purposes, let's just say attention can turn into a project, which is an ongoing or which is a uh, a set of actions that has a, a fixed end. It's an outcome to achieve something to work towards. Um, it can also just be an action. An action is a single individual thing you do, like mail a letter, whereas a project might be uh, write a letter. If you have to like do research to write their letter and figure out the recipient, um, projects have a number of steps. Actions are a single step. And then we have requests, which is something that I think doesn't get enough attention in most orgs. Um, requests are requests of, from other roles, other people who are filling specific roles that have specific accountabilities, ideally, uh, to do a certain thing. And we could talk a lot more about projects and actions. Um, if you want to learn more about that, uh, David Allen, Getting Things Done, there's a ton about that on the internet. Um, and I, I can also help teach you how to do, how to do GTD. Um, as far as requests, that's another topic that I think deserves its own video. Um, but typically, you make a request of a role, if the role thinks it makes sense, then they'll take that request. 
And then we have changes to expectations. This is something that's not very formally discussed, but I think it exists. Um, and I think a lot of suffering occurs when, when somebody thinks they're making a change to an expectation, but the person receiving, the, receiving that didn't really get it, or somebody takes on uh, a, a change to an expectation when it wasn't really what the person was, was wanting. So get clear when you're processing your tensions. Let's see, does, it get, does this turn into projects, actions, a project or action, request, or a change to expectations? And it can be more than one of these, and the tension can change over time. So you sense a tension, you take an action, now you have more information, now you feel a different tension. What we're doing here is we're just breaking down what's already going on every day and giving you a new way to think about it. So the title of the video is Tensioning the System. Um, this is a term that is useful for thinking about in an organization, and this is voluntarily creating or exposing a tension, knowing that the organization has the capacity to turn it into meaningful change. Tensioning the system is healthy. A lot of times people won't take action because they think, oh, I don't want to cause tension for that person, or I don't want, to, I don't want them to have to think about it. If you trust that your colleagues can process their own tensions, and if you empower them and enable them to get what they need to do their work, you don't have to worry about taking care of them. You can tension the system, and tensions will actually flow through the organization in a healthy way, kind of like I described before. I also want to talk, uh, mention the term tension-driven. I love this term. Um, tension-driven is the idea that our activities can be motivated by tensions, which they already are, but let's get conscious about it. So when you're being tension-driven, you are responsive. That is, an organization that's tension-driven responds to its environment, something changes, attention is sensed, and it's made, it's, made, it's made sense of, it's made use of quickly, as opposed to going into the org, bouncing around, not really getting processed, causing distress, causing confusion, having people avoid it, sometimes for years. Um, the organization becomes more responsive when you're tension-driven. Tension-driven uh, is also grounded in reality. A lot of people and and uh, we'll, we'll do what's called design from mind. Design from mind is to be avoided. This is when somebody has a good, uh, like they think they want to solve a problem, they have an idea for a solution, and it's, a, it's sort of a big vision, and they think this and this and this will do it, um, and they're making it up. They're making up the solution. When you're tension-driven, you're responding to the immediate challenge. Now, sometimes you do have to design things. That's, that's normal and expected, but there's a real seductive nature about designing from mind. It feels good. Um, you think you're being, you know, people are being smart. It rewards their egos. Um, so what I, all I want you to do here is get the distinction between making a tension-driven decision and a design from mind decision. Once you have that distinction in your head and you can think, oh yeah, that, that's kind of a design from mind thing, um, you can avoid it or you can at least be conscious of it when you're doing it. Almost all this work is about being conscious in your organizations and bringing to light things that previously were happening but you weren't aware of. The other thing that tension-driven change does is it's incremental. So it actually creates an agile organization. Um, one of the big tenets in agile is to continuously deliver uh, working software. In the context of an org, you can think of it in terms of uh, continuously responding to the environment. So when you're tension-driven, your organization is responding incrementally every day to tensions as they come up and processing them in a healthy way. And the more you do something, the better you get at it. So you'll actually become better and better and more and more efficient at processing tensions. Um, tension-driven change also enables an evolutionary feedback loop. Uh, there's a big movement called the Teal Organizational Movement that talks about evolution as one of the core tenets of next-generation organizations. Um, what do we mean by this? Uh, there are a lot of organizations out there at the cutting edge, uh, Zappos, Whole Foods, Morningstar Farms, WD-40 even. These are organizations that have embraced this Teal way of working or are developing towards it. And these organizations, uh, one of their traits is that they're evolutionary. They actually change and respond to their environment like an organism instead of a machine. But that's a topic for another video. So why am I so jazzed on this? Uh, I'm working on a tool called Teal Dog. And part of what Teal Dog does is allows you to take attention 
and break it down across the organization and fan it out. Um, this, this diagram is just a representation, but imagine uh, as a leader having like noticing something that should, could or should be different and breaking that down into a couple of projects and actions and requests and then having those projects and actions uh, go to the appropriate people and having them break those down into other projects and actions and also expectations, which can create even create new roles, which can then create new tensions from those roles. And having that, that single tension fan out across the organization and to be able to see and track where it goes. That's the big vision of what I'm working on right now. Um, I haven't really brought it up yet with anyone, but now you know. So if you wanna, if this is interesting to you, uh, reach out to me, teal.dog is the website. Um, the site is in beta right now. And I would love to get some people using this because I think it could be a very uh, interesting way to uh, visualize change in your organization. So we're gonna wrap up in a second. Um, I just wanna give you some not so synonyms. Uh, people all over the world have a problem with the word tension for, uh, for this. And some organizations have just stopped using it and use a different word. Attention is not like an issue, like I have an issue. Um, and the issue doesn't, issue doesn't, doesn't clarify the, the, the nature of the desire for change. We also don't want to use the word problem. Um, I have a problem. Uh, now that has a lot of baggage. It also has uh, the, the connotation of not being a positive thing. Like, like often you have an opportunity. Uh, there's an opportunity to double our efficiency. I, I, I'm sensing that we can do this. I need to, I need to, I need to figure this out. Um, so problems, opportunities, they are tensions, but the word doesn't, does it, the word problem or opportunity doesn't actually convey what we're talking about. Now there is a word you can use, and this is what I'm using with my clients, which is concern. Um, a concern just relates to a thing. It's neither positive nor negative. It's not good or bad. Um, and people have a much easier time relating with the word concern. So uh, if you want to think in terms of concerns, you can do that. Um, if you're learning more about this, it's going to be called tensions on the internet. Um, and you can actually start with this today. So if you're an individual contributor, just start by tracking your tensions. Uh, it's Friday. Just sit down and write down uh, all the tensions that you feel in the organization. And this is your private list. No one's going to look at it. Tensions are private. And you can uh, write down what role you're noticing it in. So uh, if you serve several roles, or maybe you don't even know you're serving in several roles, try to get clear, what's the, what's the business need that the tension is coming from? What role is it in? And then if it's something you can do something about, what's the next action you can take to move that forward? Do you need to get information? Do you need to tell somebody about something? Or maybe make a request? Or maybe you need to have an ongoing expectation for something to be done. Those are the four pathways, which is a topic for a different video. And then think about who can help. And that's uh, the idea of a request. Um, now, when you're doing this, you can just dump all your tensions at once and then process them later. I don't like the word, but I haven't found a better one. This is tension processing, tension review. Um, but what you want to get in the habit of, the most important thing is to brain dump. Get those tensions out onto paper or into a system. I use Apple Notes. You can, use, you can email yourself. You can text yourself. Anything where you can come back to that later and then figure out your next steps, what role you're feeling it in, and who can help you. And the reason we ask what role is for you to get clear about what the real need is. Keep it grounded in reality and keep it tension driven. If you're a leader, if you lead a team or you're an executive, um, you can start to normalize tensions. So use the word, you can use the word concern or tension, but you can start to say, hey, I've got a tension or I've got a concern or, oh, it sounds like you might have a tension with that. Or um, does, anyone, does anyone have any concerns about this? Um, and get people real clear about what we're talking about. Uh, you can find some resources on the internet to educate them about tensions. Uh, you can send them this video. It's a great way. And then you can also, if you're a leader, ask others to track theirs. So say, let's do an, ex uh, I'd like to do an experiment. I'd like everyone to, for the next two weeks, to just write, just keep a list of all your tensions. It's private. I won't look at it. I won't, no one else, no one's going to look at it. Um, but I want to see if we can get some value out of the things we're sensing. That's it. And start there. Try things, be experimental. You can also add a section to your meeting 
Now, don't now don't just say like, does anyone have any concerns? That has uh, a backloaded meaning. It doesn't mean what we talk about when we talk about tension processing. So hopefully, you can educate people around around tensions a little bit before you do this. But ideally, at least once a week, you should be having a meeting where anybody in the org or anybody in the team can bring up any tension related to any of the work they're doing, and then everyone will help them find the next step to move it forward. And if you want some help with that, that's a lot of what I do, so please reach out. So that's all I have for you today. You can reach me at uh, teal.dog slash chat or teal.dog slash meet to schedule a meeting. And of course, you can email me at j at teal.dog. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this is probably gonna be my last daily video. Uh, these take a lot of energy and um, what I really want to do is turn these into more like uh, educational pieces that will also be available in Teal Dog. Teal Dog also has integrated learning, so you can learn all these concepts while you're processing your tensions in your roles. Um, and if you're excited about the potential of using this new software, please reach out. I would love to talk to you. Okay, thanks for watching.